wish I could give you the tea, but mine's just a little bit tart, and that's why it's called Leah's Lemonade. And there's a special guest at the lemonade stand. Damani, what's good? Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We got to talk about you because you out here making moves in the music industry. Thank you. I'm trying. Okay, so first of all, we got to talk about the, the latest song out, Problem. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. all platforms right now and the music video just dropped earlier so talk talk, right. talk to me about problem where was your head at because I, I listened to the song and i watched the music video and i'm trying to pick up what you're putting down so explain to me where you was at when you created problem man i really just i heard the beat my guy g money made it he made the um he made the beat and uh i think he didn't expect me to get on it but then i was like yeah that one right there i like that and sometimes I don't even expect myself to get on some stuff, but it just clicked. It, I don't know. It just sounded. Like it's a feeling. Right. It's a feeling. And then I just got on there and just said exactly what I felt. I was just uh, just thinking about um, just how crazy the streets been and how crazy like the world has been and kind of just putting it into a song. So talk to me because obviously we're watching as 2020, you know, uh, somebody had recently came out and said being a rapper is the most dangerous job in the world in 2020 because we've lost so many people in hip hop due to violence. So talk to me about a being a child of a rapper and then being a rapper yourself being in the industry and what that feels like. Are there conversations behind closed doors talking about how hip hop is moving right now? Um, I've heard people say that. I, I think it's all about how you carry yourself. I think it's about how you handle how you handle your your situation. Um, because it's it can be being a rapper can be a dangerous job. Yeah. But um, being a rapper can also not be that bad. You know, it just right, depends right. on <laughs> it depends on what you put out into the universe, what kind of energy you put out into the universe. Because whatever you put out there, you're gonna get it right back. I feel like, um, yeah, for some people, for some people, it's, it's it's a lot. Yeah. But shoot, it's all about the energy. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I get it because I just, I think 2020 has been a devastating year for everybody, no matter what right, you yeah. do, no matter how much money you make, you know what I'm saying? It, it's been a, a tough year for the world as a collective. So I think it's a humbling experience and hopefully hip hop or whatever is going on in the streets um, doesn't translate to any more talented young artists losing their lives because it, right, it's yeah. wild. Yeah, that's, that's crazy for, for no reason too, senseless. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I'm just hoping that you know at the end of the day, people are looking at the unfortunate deaths of some of these artists and realizing like it don't got to be like this. Definitely doesn't. Um, I feel like man, I feel like it's gonna get better. I feel like we learning, we uh, we learning from the mistakes that we see others make and the mistakes we see around us. Yeah, and I definitely do feel like we're headed in a good direction. Yeah, absolutely. Now, speaking of this year and coronavirus, you were actually on tour out of the country when everything just just stopped. Right. Yeah, I was um, I, right when Corona, like right before Corona. I yeah, the tour was over with, and then I got back home, celebrated Christmas, and then Corona. Corona. So it was it was it was crazy. So Stop talk to me about the tour because domestically, big crit. Talk about that experience. Right. What was that like? Man, Big Crit and Rap City, man, they just they're just such dope artists. Uh Crit, he's a he's a dope producer. I don't think a lot of people know that. He mm. produced and he's a dope writer. Um Rap City, she's a she's a dope lyricist. Dope. Right. And both of them are just cool, like just dope performers. And man, I was just I was just blessed and grateful to be able to just learn from them. Just some more dope people to learn from. Mm -hmm. And then in Europe with Jid, the way his shows are so crazy, man. The way he connect with his fans and like the energy is just I was just grateful to just be there, just learn, just soak in a lot of different things. For real. Yeah, absolutely. And um you actually made your single Homesick in, in Paris. So talk to me about where your head was at when you created Homesick. Right. right. I shot I shot that video in Paris. Um 
I actually made it right before I went on tour because I was I was kind of thinking like where my head would be on tour. Like I felt right. like I was gonna be missing home on tour, mm-hmm. but I got on tour and I actually wasn't. <laughs> I was having fun and I was I was ready to go to the next city, ready to do the next show, and I, I really could I could stay on the road. I'm a um, I'm an album artist and I'm a I'm a uh, I'm a road artist. I can stay on the road, but um, yeah, shooting that in Paris, man, it was dope. It was some people out there that actually knew me and was yeah. like going crazy over me. I'm like, wow, y'all all the way out here showing love. But you'd be right. surprised, like a lot of European countries really love American hip hop. So that exactly. was dope that you were able to see, like you know, European love. Exactly. I was. That, I feel like every artist needs to see that. Yeah. And would you say, like, your touring experience was totally different when you're on the tour? Because obviously, I'm sure you've been on tour with your dad before. You've done it. You've seen the tour life. But what was it like? How is it? does it differ when it's like you're just on tour with somebody versus it being you on tour? Mm-hmm. Man, um, really, I haven't even, I've been, I've, I haven't really been on tour with my dad like that, for real. I've been to a couple shows, but mm-hmm. I never really got the got the feel of it, got the vibe of it. But um, so these were my first tours with uh, Big Crit, Rap City, and, and Jid. But um, what a blessing to say those names right, right. on tour with Big right. Crit, my first tour. Exactly. But uh, yeah, tour. I mean, I mean, it's gonna all, it's gonna be different because he's he's such a big artist. Yeah. Uh, he got the tour bus. He got the right, uh, right. suites, the hotels and junk. So yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different. We we was in a uh, Sprinter van. So <laughs> we was in a Sprinter van one tour, and then we was on the uh, we was on a tour bus in Europe. Okay. So it was, it was cool. So you got a little feel of, a little feel of everything, but that's that's right. how it goes. You know what I'm saying? That's what your dad experienced before he was where he was. So it's dope to exactly. see build from the ground up. And speaking I love of, it. You love it? That's, I, love that's it. I, love, I love the process. I, I love it. Every bit of it. And a lot of people be, they be, uh, they be trying to give me the nice stuff or trying to uh, mm-hmm. give me the easy way. I'm like, I, I enjoy this. Like, I want to get it out the mud. Well, well, it takes it. well, speaking of that, you know, you were also on your dad's album, Libra. And uh, oh, yeah. I, I interviewed your dad and I talked about the fact that um, you know, you were seeking independence. And I was like, well, you know, we see a lot of um, rich kids, you know, want to live up under that umbrella. But in one of the right. lines, you said, I used to run for my last name. And then you said, ultimately, you didn't want to live with your parents till you was 25. So you moved out. So talk to me about like your experience growing up in the spotlight, and why it made you not want to live that lifestyle. Hmm. Um, I feel like even if I was in the spotlight or not, I feel like I would still kind of had this mentality. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just always been like this. I just, at a young age, I always been like this on my own, trying to do my own thing. Yeah. I didn't read, I, I didn't like reading instructions. I built, I, <laughs> I put together stuff how I wanted to put together. Right. I just, I was just stubborn. Just wanted to just go my own way. I was just always like this. And then, um, I just started. You make a lot of mistakes that way. I feel yeah. like I, I um, I just learned a lot from my mistakes, and then I started learning a lot from other people's mistakes and just listening to people, mm-hmm. and putting that all together, and it started working out. So, yeah. but yeah, I always been like this. Yeah, well, and I was gonna say too. You know, um, I was watching an episode of Red Table Talk where Jada talked about Jaden wanting to leave their home, and she was so against it. Um, but how was your family when you were like, listen, I'm not trying to stay here, 18, I'm out. Like, what, what was their reaction? Was it like, go, or was it like, stay? Or was it different for each parent? Um, my mom, she didn't even know. She didn't even know until she seen that I ordered a couch. I had ordered, <laughs> I had ordered a couch. She was like, what's this couch for? What do you need a couch for? I was like, yeah, I got my own spot. Uh-uh, absolutely out of line. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. how out of there you were. Nobody was stopping you. Right. I I just didn't want to tell her because I knew she would feel bad. Like not even feel bad, but like 
you mean you, you, your kids growing up, moving yeah. out? I didn't really feel like that, but then I actually probably made it worse by not telling her. But probably every, everything is cool now. She's been over and she's she's yeah, everything's cool. I mean, listen, you got a whole rap career. You out here going on tour, you know? I'm saying globally, so I think they had to move on pretty quickly. Right, man. But they, my parents have always been supportive. They they let me do. They supported me with pretty much everything I do. Yeah. And, you know, I, I love them for that. Yeah, and that's dope. And that's like essential to to you expressing yourself and being able to fulfill what you want to do. Because you've always voiced since a very young age. You went to be a rapper and we kind of saw that on the show and how it right. came out and how your dad put it to the test. So it's dope, A, because we watch a lot of these uh, reality TV shows where the kids are like, I want to be a rapper. And you never hear nothing. But right. you're out here really, you yeah. know, out in the grind. Yeah, I always been. I always wanted. To, uh, it's always been my dream. Wanted to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. Wanted to be an artist. I was. Uh, I was talking to a, a old friend from school in elementary school, like mm -hmm. fourth grade, third grade. She was telling me stuff that I didn't even remember. She said, um, "I had. Um, we had career dress up. We were dressing up for what we wanted to be." Uh huh. And she was like, "Do you remember what you dressed up for?" And I was like, "No." She was like. You dressed up and you had on a chain, you had a microphone, you said you were a rapper. I said, God damn, I sure did, didn't I? About that life, okay? I just always I always wanted to be an artist. And people people they, they just don't understand it. They just yeah. think it just, you know, just come from I don't know what people think. But yeah, I always wanted to do this. Yeah, no, and that's dope. And I'm I'm glad, you know, no matter what, you've always stuck with that. Now, speaking of your career, I know that you and J. Cole are close. Um, you went to the Dreamfield oh, yeah. writer camp. So talk to me about that, because I know I heard the story. You, you went up to him three times. He, I'm busy. I don't got the time. And then he finally heard your stuff, uh, which was partially about him ignoring you. And he was like, I like that. So talk to me about that. And then what is transitioned into right now? Man, I feel like, I feel like that's just such a a, such a dope story because yeah, I ran into him at his at his writer's camp. I just popped up. Um, somebody told me they was they was up there, and then I was trying to like get the details and see how can I get up there. Nobody was answering, us, so I just pulled up. I just I just snuck in and then just checking in all the rooms, basically meeting new artists, networking, and then I'm walking in the hallway. And I see him. I said, oh, "Hey, God dang it, the man! I, mean, I was yeah. looking for exactly." But um, but yeah, he was just busy. He was busy, and I was trying to plan some music. I wasn't realizing everything that was going on at the time. Cause how long ago was that? Man, that was uh, maybe two years ago. They were working on that Dreamville album. Mm -hmm. so I think it was a a year, a year or like six months before the Dreamville album came out. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I was just uh, just trying to plan some music. I didn't even want to. I didn't want no. I didn't want no feature. I ain't. I didn't really want anything. I right. just wanted to plan some music. I don't know why. But I just wanted to play. Because it's music. J Cole. That's why. Yeah, but it's like even when I played him some music, it's like I was just playing it. I didn't even want him. To, I wouldn't even give him time to even comment or say nothing. I was just playing. So I don't know what I wanted. I just was playing. But he had to stop me. He was like, "Whoa!" He was like. Give people a chance to to tell you how good the music is. And I was like, mm. Damn. I don't know what I, but I, yeah, I wanted to plan some music. He told me he ain't had time, so I come out there the next day, then the next day, and I was just like, man. I don't, right. Then I make that song up there, and then um, I sent it to him, and he checked it out, and he said, yeah, man, I love it, but it wasn't. He told me it wasn't like that. And then <laughs> that's, right. So you was like. <laughs> Right, I was like, man, I don't know. That, that's how I took it. That's how I took it. Right, know. right. But, um, yeah, we, we kind of been cool ever since. Yeah, and what does that mentorship look like in, in music? Like, do you just send him stuff, or is it more so just like a friendship slash mentorship? Um, yeah, I've sent him music, and uh, he'll comment, tell me his opinions, uh, and then uh, I'm trying to get some beats from him. He told me stay on him for for some beats, but I don't know. He's a little 
he might be doing some other junk. Right. But um, yeah, just sending stuff. And I was selling some PlayStation. I had the PlayStation Five. I sent him a picture of the PlayStation I had. We had a laugh about that. <laughs> okay, hustler. Right. But he's a cool. He's a cool guy. So speaking of J. Cole, who, you know, you have been on tour with some pretty big people. You have relationships with people like J. Cole. Your dad is T.I. Who is your dream collab? Like, Damani is is fulfilled musically if he works with Blank. Man. I would, uh, I would love to work with Andre 3000. Ooh, good one, uh, good one. Andre, then I I just love to sit in the studio and watch Kendrick work. I want to I want to mm-hmm. watch him. I want to see what his process is. But yeah, Andre Kendrick, and uh, yes, I think that's about it. Of course, Cole. Um, right. I just got in. I just got on Frank Ocean. I'm really late. I just got on Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean is a dope artist. I want to sit yeah. in the studio. With him. Yes. Um, yeah. He emerges from the surface because he like cold. When they disappear in the public, you don't know right. where they're at. And when they come out, exactly. hit the project. And But that's the type of vibe you give me. I feel like you ain't into all the rah-rah. I'm not. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I, I just want to be able to do what I want to do. I'm not trying to be the greatest. I'm not trying to mm-hmm. out-rap anybody. I just want to be able to make music and talk about exactly what I feel and just say what I want to say. And then when I don't feel like saying nothing, I don't have to say nothing. You chill it. Simple as that. Right. I don't want to feel like, I don't want to feel like, I want to have no label telling me when I got to put a project out or Mm. what I got to say and how this song got to sound. It's not why I'm in it. I'm just making music. So speaking of projects, you're supposed to be dropping a new project in 2021. Can you tell us about that? What can we expect? Are there any features you can drop or... Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely dropping a project in um like the top of the year. Okay. I don't know. Um, I don't know what's the title or what's the concept. I just got a. I just got a, a good body of work right now, and I do have a couple features. I got um, I got D Smoke. Okay. I got Deontay Hitchcock. Okay. And of course, uh, Olu. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, we'll see okay. who else. Okay. And you prefer to put out your project based artist. So you prefer to put out whole bodies of work. Right, exactly. Versus a single. Why is that? Just because it's like all your kind of emotions and expression in one thing? That's a good question. Um I think projects just resonate with me more. Like it's uh I feel like you it's like a it's like a music video and then it's like a movie. You mm-hmm. know, you could uh tell the story. Exactly. You could you could get your get your ideas across a little bit better. I feel like with a project. And then um if a single if a single blows up, that's not really that don't really do nothing for me. I don't really care about a single. Mm-hmm. I care about like if someone says, Yo, I love your album. That body like, work. Right, exactly. Like one song is three minutes, <laughs> if if even that. So right. I just focus on albums. And how songs flow into the next and like the story that the whole project tells is just that's what I like. Mm, gotcha. Now a little known fact that I've heard through the grapevine is that you be busting ass at pool. That's what <laughs> I heard. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. I've been, I heard uh, certain people won't play you because you're that good. It's uh it's been a little side hustle. It's oh, you so you be hustling for <laughs> And if they want to put some money down, then yeah. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a game. It's a game. But you got to yeah, be, because I've never been good at pool. Yeah, it's uh, it's all about just geometry, just angles. and uh, Well, practice. I was very bad at geometry, so no surprise it's, there. It's, it's just angles, angles and practice. But yeah, I've been beating, um, I've been beating Thug. Hmm. Um, What's the most amount of money you hustled somebody out of? Man, we didn't took about um, man, me King, me and King, we be uh, I be playing and he be betting on, he be betting on me and I be betting on myself. 
<laughs> we done walked out with three, four thousand one night off of uh, the YSL folk. Oh, man, I love them, but I got to say. But then, but then, they'll teach us a game, and we'll lose right back. Mm. Doug done taught me a game, a card game, where I done lost. What game? I don't even know what it's called, man. It was sketchy. Even that, <laughs> that's how it's hustle. He makes the rules, and then you lose. You see how that goes? Exactly. He said, yeah, man, sit down. Let me teach you this game. I just knew it. He was too excited. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, you wanna there's a bunch of that. Just, just going back and forth, playing games, having fun. Yeah, absolutely. He knew what he was doing. He wanted his money back. So let me exactly. Devon, let me teach you this game real quick. It was no rules. He made it up, and you lost. Exactly, and then it what went. It went until went until like towards the end of the game. I, I had told myself. I said, you know what? I don't see myself winning right now. I don't see myself winning. Um, <laughs> but I got playing. I got all of them on the pool table. Well, listen. Next time I we need to go to a random pool bar in the middle of nowhere and start putting right. out bets and sweet house. Okay, sweet right. house. We with Corona out. over. We got to do it because because I can use four bands. Okay. Exactly. They don't even want to play me no more up here. See. Okay. Yeah. We won't tell them. You got to come to DC. That's where I'm at. Come to the DC area and we are gonna bust ass and pool. We putting it all on the table. But I'm you don't go. I, I won't go because we will lose our money. I'm down. All right, bet. Okay, so I'm not going to hold you much longer, but I do like to play a game with people when they come to the lemonade stand. And um, since your single is called Problem, do you okay. have a problem with, or what's really the problem? That's what the game is called. Okay. So I'm going to just see what you got a problem with if you got a problem with certain things. So... What's really the problem with social media? You got a problem with, with social media? Um, nah, I don't I don't have a problem with social media. I feel like um some people choose to use it, some people don't. Um I don't really choose to use it. I just just put my music out there. I feel like people want to know when my music drops, so I, mm-hmm. I let them know. But yeah, it's just a bunch of uh it's a bunch of everything all on right in front of your face. Right. It's a bunch of everything right in front of your face, and I, it's not a, I, I, got, I like to filter. I like to yeah. filter through it's a lot yeah. of stuff, so I just don't be on there a lot. What is that guilty pleasure for Damani? Sorry, I skipped the game real quick. Mm. What's something that you really love that most people don't know? Hmm. Like, really like- love and most people don't know. I wish I had someone else in here so they could answer it, because I really do not <laughs> To myself, really love. Okay, we didn't say it before. We didn't say. Like, is it a certain TV show? Is it a certain food? I don't even watch TV. That's the thing. I don't. You don't know. You in your own world. I like. I like talking. I like learning people. I like talking to people. Uh, holding conversations, Uh learning about them. Um. So That's you know, inspiration. You, can do interviews. you could be the next one doing interviews after you know. I, I be when I was in school, a lot of people used to call me Dr. Phil because I used to always try to, uh, I used to always solve problems, fix things in people's lives. Mm-hmm. And, so they was always, and then they'd call me granddad or they'd call me, yeah, old soul, exactly. So, so, you, so you, I got it, I got it. So, your, your guilty pleasure is you know, listening to people and helping people fix things, exactly. Okay, I'll give you that one. Okay. That's a good question. I'm going to think about that more. Okay, you can DM me and tell me because I want to know. I'm interested. I'm the same way. I do like to learn people and I do like discussions. So that's why I'm doing what I do. Um, right. Okay. Do you have a problem with the club? Are you a club guy? Don't have a problem with the club. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a club guy. I, I You would see me in a club-like environment. Mm-hmm. Um. If like my people there, if my people there and they call me and they say, "Hey man, we up here. Where you at?" I'm like, "Ah, okay. I'm gonna check y'all out." But it's not like I don't think I ever be like, "Yeah, let's go to the club." <laughs> Bottles on me. Let's go. Yeah, but okay. but I, I I do like I do like that experience. I get to go and see what people are listening to, see how they react to different yeah. music. So I, I I love the club and just like I love um going to the store just like mm-hmm. i love going to 
a restaurant, listening to what music they, seeing what music they listening to, so, right. et cetera. Keep your ears to the street. That's smart. Right. Just, um, just, another, just another place to go. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a problem with getting a vaccine, a COVID vaccine? Definitely don't. I'm, oh, you're going to get it? A vaccine, no. Oh, I'm not, because I was going to say, well, let me know how it goes, because if you start ticking and some start start feeling a little weird, let me know. I ain't doing it. Um, I ain't doing it either. I feel you on that one. Okay. I think it, uh, it's, it's, that's, that's crazy. I, I'm not with no shots. I'm, with, I'm not with no medicine, no nothing like that. Yeah. Well, you're vegan, like, right? So, like, you're about the herbal, natural... Herbs, uh, oils, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Oh, so you smell good. You smell good. Good to know. <laughs> What's up, what? Wow. Okay. Do you have a problem with reality TV? Reality TV? No. Not reality TV. Um, I really don't watch TV like that. But um, some you stuff. Be TV when you were on TV, or no? Not even then. I did sometimes, like in the in the when it first when I first got on it, I did watch it. Um, me and my mom, we would all sit down and catch the show and laugh at each other, so that was funny. But um, some reality show be funny, not not because it's actually funny, but funny because like like this is so weird. Can I this tell you that my top ten favorite reality TV moments is when Tiny and Shakana got dragged on that bike. I on that never, bike. Bruh. <laughs> bruh. For me, right. for me, yeah, that is a top 10 that they aired that yeah. on television. Man, that was uh, that was funny right there. I didn't even catch it on TV. I, I think somebody sent it to me and I was like, wow. And I was like, "Did they, is this on TV? I was like, wow, but yeah. That that they was actually um pop pops and them, they did they just got a bike. They just got a new custom bike. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. <laughs> but I looked at that bike and I was like, here we go. Flashback. <laughs> well now they got some nice bikes. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. Listen, I just hope the outcome is better <laughs> than what it was a I, couple of years back. I don't know. Yeah, it was good. It was a good laugh. It was. It, it was hilarious. My t like one of my top ten faves when I like when I watched it on the internet, I cried like cried laughing. It's a good little laugh, yeah. A good laugh, good sports. It was good sports for letting that air too. Good sports, right, right. Good sports because I don't know. I you know, listen. <laughs> that happens to all of us, but when it's like put on national television, it's a different story. You know what I mean? But yeah, either way, either way. Okay. Um, do you have a problem with the way that people perceive your family and your parents? Man, nah, I, I used to, mm. but nah, because you gotta, I, you gotta like try to understand people. Like they really don't know. Yeah, a lot of people all they do is they they see stuff off their phone or off TV, so they don't even they don't even connect that yet these people are real people with real problems with yeah. you know I mean real stuff going on in life. They don't even click they don't click like that. They just see something through a screen. Right. Or see a head. Um, and they'll even they'll never they'll never even begin to understand mm -hmm. a lot of things that go on with this kind of life. So yeah. it's just yeah. it's like what do you expect them to do? Yeah. So I I, I try to be a little understanding, and if you choose to inform them, then you do. And if not, then just be quiet. You don't gotta tell them the truth, but if you want to, then yeah, you can. Yeah, basically, people are gonna perceive what they want to perceive. But I think it's dope too that, like you, like you said, you appreciate your parents because hell, your dad gets drugged all the time for his parenting, and I think right. he's raised great children. So right. Um, People just going to talk, man. People going to talk. They're going to go with the, the most entertaining thing. They're going to go with that. Mm -hmm. And that's understanding. Uh, yeah. that's, that's expected. So I feel like once you already expect that, it's, it's less, it's less uh, trauma on you. 
At so, what age did you like kind of snap out of like, okay, people are going to talk shit about my parents and this is just what it's going to be like. At what age were you like, I don't care anymore what people say, what people talking about at school? Because I mean, that's the reality, right? Like you were going to school and your classmates bringing up shit. What, what was that experience like? Like at what age were you like, you know what? It, it is what it is. Um, it's definitely when, uh, whenever I started putting like, like expressing myself in my music, I feel like that's like uh, 15, like 15, 16 years old. That's when I really started expressing myself in my music. Mm. When I had like, um, when I had that route to express myself, mm. I really cared less about uh, expressing myself to the world, like other than music. Yeah. I care less about responding. I care less about explaining mm -hmm. because I just put it in my music. If you care to listen, if you care to know how I feel about what you said, you'll listen to my music. If not, then I really, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. That's dope. Okay. Do you have a problem with the direction that hip hop is going in? No. Don't have a problem. Um, I feel like everything grows. I feel like it's growing. I feel like it's changing, it's evolving. I feel like a lot of people are uneasy about it. A lot of people feel uncomfortable because it's something they never seen before, something they never heard before, yeah. felt before. And they're holding on to this, this, this feeling that they used to feel when they heard music. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta like, you gotta like let go and understand that things gonna evolve. Um, so no, I don't have a problem. I feel like it's getting a lot of, it's getting really creative. It's getting, uh, it's less rules. Yeah. It's less, it's less boxes. A lot of people used to be boxed in to, yeah. so if you were this kind of rapper or this kind of artist, what you could say, what you could do, how you could look. It's getting less, it's, it's getting more free. And yeah. I think that's what people, that's what people are uh, having a hard time understanding. Yeah. Well, and I was going to say, I think it, it, it shows true tenure when you're able to adapt to the change. Like when I was talking to your dad about Libra, I said, pardon is your single, which it is. <laughs> but I told him pardon is your single because you really showed everybody the, the elevation in which you evolved as an artist, right? Like we know what classic T.I. down South Atlanta, right. you know, 10 years ago, tip sounds like but when you got on partner with a little baby you caught the cadence you caught the flow you had the beat right. so you're showing people that one hip-hop is evolving and if you don't evolve with it your ass will be left behind so i thought exactly. it was really dope that you know he got on partner and did what he did because i told ti i said that's that's the one and yeah. we're playing party mm -hmm. nah you're right definitely if, if you don't uh some people some people just some people just chill and say, you know what, I'm not gonna do it. And some people say, I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah. Pop is always he never really ran from no challenge. He always yeah. uh looked into everything and seen it for what it was. Give it you give it some time, he gon' it's going he gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that song. One of my favorites off the album. Okay, well, I got through all the problems. You ain't have problems with much. I appreciate it. Um, right. Before I go, though, have, were you able to see your new niece? You have a new baby niece. Man, you know what's crazy? I have not. I have not. I've, um, I think I went over there. I went over to the house yesterday or the day before, and all I was asking, I said, where the baby? And they were looking at me crazy. They were like, they're in the hospital. I was like, hey. Have yeah. you ever FaceTimed the baby or anything or seen pictures? I got, a picture. I got a picture. I got a picture, but I have yet to to hold my niece. Your first niece, right? I have yet. I haven't. You got, listen. I think it's because of all the co I think it's because of the COVID, COVID and stuff. But but Zani's okay. She's doing well. Baby doing well. Right. Right. Okay, good, good. Cause I, yeah, I figured because I saw uh, Tiny's post about you know the fact that uh, she hasn't been able to be there because of COVID. So I was exactly. Like, okay, good, good. But I'm glad the family's well. I'm glad everybody's healthy. I'm glad you know you got music coming out. You expressing yourself. You living your best black life. We love to see it. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, thank so you for having me on here. Absolutely. I appreciate you taking your time. So again, let everybody know where they can follow you and find your music. 
Right. You can follow me on Instagram at the money, D O M A N I. Uh, you can check out my music. The link gonna be on my bio. I'm not really on any other social media. Um, but yeah, you can check the link out of my bio on Instagram. Uh, music's everywhere. Problems just dropped. Me and Olu. It's on World Stars. On uh, YouTube. Check it out. Check out the project. Time will tell. And the new project coming out. Mm-hmm. 2021. Right. And I, you know, listen. I'm just saying, Leah would not be a horrible name to name the project. If that's just what you're feeling. You know what that's, I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Actor. Again, when we bust everybody's ass and pull. And pull. It just, right. it just makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You putting it together. You connecting it. I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to help you out. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, I, that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Know you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Grab a cup, throw it back, and a sip on all of it.